Welcome everyone to the HWBOT World Series 2016 North America. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and I've been joined by our expert in overclocking, Mr. Ligoft. Hi Ligoft. Hey guys, still there? So uh, we are now doing the amateur final for the HWBOT World Series. The World Series is the um, no, the competition for for the people that didn't knew about overclocking before and that just discovered that in the, in the past few days uh, here at the LAN ETS, so either the visitors or the gamers, and um, they will be fighting on uh, the, the setup provided by our partners. So uh, they will be using an ASUS Z170A motherboard uh, paired up with the Intel Core i7-6700K CPU, uh, DDR4 memory as well, and they are all using the uh, Seasonic PSU P760. 760 watts. Um, they are all mounted on the Stricom BC1, Stricom Bench 1 Benchable. This is the special project at openbenchable.com if you want more information. Uh, of course, uh, all, some of, of the extra uh, systems are uh, being provided by some of our partners, like Microbytes. It's a, uh, a shop in a, a shop chain in in, a, in Montreal area, and I got the information that they are almost ready, almost ready to go. They are taking the picture. The, the no the usual picture as we have to uh, as we have to uh, to do shaking hands and making sure that uh, no they will uh, everything will be fair play for that so this will be the first semi final of the HWBot World Series for amateur yeah and I heard uh, their Machai is facing a Rudolf a Rudolf CS Go so probably some uh, Counter Strike Source player. Well, we actually, there's a, there's, the there's a story behind the <laughs> there's a story ah. behind this. But let's cue to our judge that will give the beginning. Uh, Christian, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. So, are the overclockers ready and they want to go? Are you guys ready? I think so. Okay. Is that you? You ready as well? Okay. So, five, four, three, two, one, go. And here we go for the first 15 minutes in this match. They will have to do two times 15 minutes to make sure that they have the. They do 15 minutes, then they switch the system. Do 15 minutes again. They all, they both bench on XTU, and this will uh, make sure that they can have the exact same chance at winning. Indeed, this is really to rule out uh, if some platform should have like a faster CPU because XTU is of course also very CPU dependent that they both have the, let's say, the equal chance of, of getting the best score. And I think they just add up the total score. Is that correct, Truthman, for the XTU? Indeed, so 2 times 15 minutes, the score in XTU is add up for each round and the maximum um, total score is the winner. Yeah, indeed. So this is something that we will try maybe to force as well for the extreme guys, just to avoid that we have like one guy run, able to run 6,300, while the other one can just do like 6,000-ish, just to have like a fair chance for everybody. But as we still have some, I think, technical well, let's issues say that, to that solve was that. Just, This was just like, uh, you know, ideas behind the scene of how we could improve the competitions. But for the amateurs, um, so they will be using XTU, the uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility Benchmark. That's one of the benchmarks that these people can do as well. Mm -hmm. And so indeed, this is already like a big difference that we're seeing from what we have seen before, because usually all competitors like could adjust like all the multipliers, voltages and stuff like that in XTU. And I see already Machai doing the Turbo Core Lite. So he's been taught well by some of the oh, oh blue <laughs> screen the first blue screen of this HWBot World Series for amateur I I'm pretty sure we will see a lot of them today let's switch yeah, to this, this is your favorite part isn't it Truthman oh, ah yeah, I love it I love it <laughs> So Rudolf CSGO already he had like a 1390 score and I've just been cross-checking their scores for let's say the qualifier and uh, they were both like uh, very tight as well. 1,468 was the highest score and on about a clock frequency of uh, 4,730 megahertz on the CPU. Machai came in second, 1,455. Facing now Rudolf, 1,445. Olivier Apex, 1,444. So really, really, really tight scores. And in fact, that's the fun thing about XTU. You can run it, rerun it, and sometimes it will give you a smaller boost just to snatch those little extra points. 
Let's see what these guys can pull off again, if they can match their previous scores. We have, having, we have uh, Rudolf that is um, submitting the first score indeed, 14.08. And actually, the, yeah, I was saying that Rudolf CSGO, we don't want to say CSGO that much because it's because Rudolf, the nickname, was already taken on HW bot, so he had to find something else to, you know, to be different and unique. So he says, well, I came to Adelani TS to play CSGO. Well, I would just be called Rudolf CSGO then. Mm -hmm. Indeed. It's still such a popular game. Eh? It's unbelievable that uh, even after, I, I don't, I've got no clue how aged, let's say, the game already is, but it's still insanely popular among every every LAN party that we go to. I think most players will play CSGO. CSGO, I think, is like two or three years old uh, as a game, but Counter-Strike itself is like more than 15 years old. Yeah, it's almost as, as old as me, I think, <laughs> that <laughs> game. Oh, blue screen for my chai. So n not running as I before. Really, so really 1408 by Rudolf CSGO and Macha still hasn't been able to to set down a score at this moment. I don't know what clock frequency is already aiming at, but I've heard somebody telling me that these guys push like 1.6 V-core in, in the CPUs. Is that correct, Roofman? Yeah, that's that's about this. These guys are, are really, really going wild because in France we had like very sensitive, let's say, adjustments, very small increments and in voltages. Some even clocked down in voltages. And we, I think we saw like max 1.35-ish. And these Canadians, they're going wild. They just put like 1.6 on air. Maybe that's a different training, different training way of doing it, eh? Because here be, that yeah. was Christian, uh, Christian Ney training the people and, uh, and Xiao oh, yeah. training them. In first, it was a, all done by still the, old uh, school, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More volts is better. So they were, uh, they were uh, restarting the systems. Uh, as you can see, Rudolf is now already back in his uh, system. Let's see the frequency that he's running at. So by oh. default, the CPU, uh, the core i7, Intel Core i7 6700K is at uh, 4 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz. And... Uh, Maybe it's trying to push the BCLK a little bit. That's, it just did the BCLK. You go there for the multipliers. So see, you, you see that some of the people told them that they they come uh, can I say that they, they know they can just switch the uh, increase the multiplier at the bottom to yep. blue screen. Yeah, I think it's aiming too high because the, the, the top CPU speed that we saw was like 4,730-ish megahertz. And he's trying straight to go almost up to 4.8. So I think it's pushing his luck a little bit too far. Maybe if he can do like a 4.6 run and then up the B clock another one. No, this is, this is the same. It's a small delay on my screen. But they have to figure out, of course, they didn't work on any of these platforms before Truthman or have they, these been That's swapped or... That's exactly the same platform they had to use for the, uh, the for the workshop. So basically, what we did is uh, we teach them for 30 minutes on the workshop on the workshop system. Like, okay, this is how you can do it. This is what you should uh, you know you should go and look for. And after that, they had 30 minutes on these systems. Not exactly this same uh, system because we had uh, we had six of them. So we are mixing them up to for them to not know exactly if that was exact same settings that they have or, or mm -hmm. not. But basically, it's the same uh, same hardware: Z170A uh, Asus motherboard, uh, Intel Core i7 6700K, uh, Seasonic PSU P760 watts, uh, DDR4 uh, memory from G-Skill, uh, and the cooling is the same air cooling that we had for the uh, for the workshop so the setup is pretty similar from what they already uh, from what they already know they just have to you know try to push it to uh, to the limits and what they can do yeah much i grabbing the lead now 1422 points so rudolf needs to catch up his setup is also running the benchmark and much i raising the multiplier one more divider let's see if this runs running at 4 uh, actually uh, Rudolf is running at 4.6 they're both running at 4.6 gigahertz mm -hmm. it's like I said this is might be a good tactic if they like talk to one another and they saw like 4.7 ish is like the max out of these platforms 
Oh. And he's proving his score and taking back in the league. Rudolf made a score of 14-26, actually improving by four points against his opponents, Machay. Machay, Machay, Machay. Yeah. And now indeed, like they're slowly upping the beat clock just to gain a little bit in memory speed as well, because that's also one of the important things. This benchmark is not only about raw CPU speed. If you get like higher or better memory bandwidth, the score will scale also a little bit more. So let's say give credits to the tutors. So it was Christian Ney and Russ Party and Mark0053 also, let's say, took some new kids on the block under their wings. Who was who was coaching the, no, them? No, 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 the 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 coach were Christian and Xiala. The uh, extreme over clicker were actually uh, uh, not training the people mostly because here it's like fifty percent French speaking and fifty percent English. Oh, and okay. All of the extreme over clickers are English, and pretty much all of the workshop were done in French. <laughs> ah, so in fact, it's like a, a hometown game for you and Tim. Then, in fact. Yeah. Like oh, and a second Ooh. blue screen for Mache. Sorry, I had to uh, to yell for that one. <laughs> no problem. And Rudolf so, CSGO indeed improving his score again with another five points, so 1,431, putting a little bit of more pressure on Machai. And we're over halfway, six minutes left. They are benching on XTU. They have um, good hardware to win. They can win like a, a motherboard, a PSU. So Asus motherboard, Seasonic PSU. Uh, they can win one of the memory kit as well. So and the winner of this amateur competition will. Oh, blue screen from Rudolf! And the uh, the um, winner of this amateur competition can win one of the uh, special prototype about the uh, uh, BC1 bench table. So the Streetcom bench table. The, the, the special stand that they are actually uh, using to put the, steam, the system on. And has there been like any development in the, in the bench tables at this moment, Truth? They're like for each, let's say each World Series tour, they're like a little bit different or they're like the same? They, the, uh, the the bench table here in North America and Europe are exactly the same. It's the same kind of, it's the same version of the prototype. Mm -hmm. um, but for the next one, there will be improvement because we already submitted a long list of improvements uh, from the feedback we got from the community so far. Okay, very cool. So it's a product really in development, in fact, that, that will be, maybe w when will be the final version for the Berlin final, maybe? Will that be like a... Yeah, of course. Oh, blue screen for Machai. <laughs> Does he look at you with like a very aggressive face when you shot blue screen? Well, actually, he, he looked at me, but not with an aggressive face. Actually, like <laughs> half of the crowd is turning to me, like, like, what the hell? And then turning back to the TV where we have the feedback, and they just look at the TV and smile again when he's coming back there. <laughs> They, they all have like this little smile on, on, on the side of their <laughs> of their cheeks like <laughs> it's funny uh -huh. we have a question by 360 net how is the processor you mean which type processor 360 net or what else what do you really want to know so they are all using the core i the intel core i7 6700k cpu of course uh, the latest skylake and the fastest skylake cpu you can get on the market so far and we're pushing it to even faster. Indeed, slowly upping the clocks. 4,640 megahertz, 1429. So a small improvement for Machai and closing the gap to a mere two points with Rudolf CSGO. A little bit more on the B clock. They're still not that aggressive with the voltages at the moment, Truth. So they may be just trimming it down a little bit. He's changing the memory voltage, which is weird. Maybe he thinks, no, that's the thing. Maybe he thinks that this will help. But that's okay. I mean, these people are amateur. These are, these are the people that didn't knew how this was working just two days ago. Mm -hmm. And we have three minutes left in this first semi-final of the HWBOT World Series for Amateur. We are seeing Machai against Rudolf, and so far Rudolf is in the lead by about nine points. So the 4029 was in fact Rudolf's screen, not Machai's screen then, I suppose. The host mixed up. Nope. Less, Did less I? than three minutes to go. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I did mixed up. Damn it. 
I'm very bad at numbers. That's not a good one, <laughs> overclocker, eh? <laughs> so Macha now taking the lead, 14.42. So uh, Rudolf needs to catch up. So less than two minutes to go. The heat is on. Oh, blue screen from Rudolf. Oh, it's a gold blue screen straight after it by Machai. There's less than two minutes in this first leg of the semi-final of the HWBOT World Series. We're seeing Machai against Rudolf. So far, Machai is in the lead with 1,442 points. Need some questions on the Twitch channel about uh, the memory provided. 3,466 C16. Exactly the same <laughs> one. That's exactly the same one. You guys can win on the giveaway. Uh, if you go to overclocking tv forward slash raffle, uh, you will be able to uh, enter in the giveaway. And that's the exact same kit that is uh, uh, there to win. Yeah, indeed. And we, we got confirmation by Andrew Roberts, so Dr. Reese from South Africa, in fact, that these are the, the e die memory kits. But indeed, we have to give credit to these amateurs they're just focusing on raw cpu performance they will not go into the bios maybe they didn't even load the xmp profile i have no idea how the setups have been preset by the hw bot or the overclocking tv team so they will not clock up the memory any higher than just by raising small amounts of b clock guys so the memory tuning or tweaking will be done by the extreme guys later on so these will be running like approximately i think almost stock or for the, uh, the, the, the the amateur competitions, this is stock, uh, yeah, indeed, almost stock. Um, they cannot access the XMP profile to activate that in the BIOS, or what they have to reboot, and most of them don't exactly um, no, know or feel okay to use the, uh, the, the XMP by now. Mm. And also, I don't have an, any idea, do they have like also like 15 or 20 minutes time just to... Whoa, I see some very weird flickering going on at Rudolf CSGO. And there is eight seconds left and both of the amateur are actually out of the systems. I think this is it. This is it. The, the time is over, so they cannot... Uh, the, none of the benchmark is running, so this is the uh, final score. This is the final score. Great, great first half of the game by Machai and Rudolf CSGO. So what will happen now is they will switch the system. Mm -hmm. They will switch the system on each side. So Rudolf will take Machai's system and Machai will take Rudolf's system. So that would be fun to see how they can uh, they can push it because there's uh, there's 11 point uh, difference in between them. Indeed, so the both the judges, let's say, and them from Overclock TV are resetting the setups and, and then they're good to go again to hopefully match the score or even break the score of the other competitor because uh, Rudolf CSGO indeed needs to catch up so his score needs to be way higher than what match I can prove on his setup. Small power drink, some boost for the brains on the left. Come on guys, let's go. You guys can do it, you guys can definitely do it. They will have 15 minutes again, that's the thing, they will have 15 minutes again to try to actually match up and go beyond what their opponent did on the same system. So it's actually super tight by uh, sometimes that they have to, you know, adjust for uh, all the all the exact uh, you know, settings and times. And it's always fun so to watch to see if they can really match the performance of the guy who was previously working on the same setup. And indeed, now they even need to surpass it. So Christian A doing the final adjustments. He's just making sure that everything is ready and it will be completely fair for everyone in this competition. There's a comment from Flankers on the live chat. The score are not so bad, actually relatively good. Uh, yes, uh, that's actually relatively good for a complete amateur that didn't knew anything about overclocking just two days ago. So yeah, I still think that this is great. This is pretty much the kind of uh, score that any kind of gamers will uh, will get if, at home if they want to overclock their system. I would like to actually say a big shout out to the LAN ETS guys. Uh, thank you very much guys for hosting us. And if you're um, coming from the LAN ETS team page, uh, welcome. Uh, don't hesitate to share and uh, and uh, 
say hi on the live chat if you're joining from somewhere else in the world let us know where you're tuning from i know that new is tuning in from france franker cz is tuning from czech republic there's antus gt size 62 or Oh, GT size 62 is the the guys from uh, a local guy. So that's the guys from uh, from Quebec that we saw uh, yesterday. Hey, nice to you, nice to see you. 369 from Spain, and we have some uh, recurring people that are always there. Joe 90 BR from Brazil, Noxinite. These people that uh, you know. That's that's fun to see you guys on the on the live chat. TXOC for the win from UK. So I guess that uh, Christian would be ready for the tuning tuning in. Let's get the communication with the judge. Judge, check, can check. you hear us? Yes, I can. You? We are all here. We can hear you. Perfect. You guys ready? Is A, you ready to sync? Yep. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one, go. And we're off again. We're off again setup. for 15, 15 minutes. They just exchanged the setup, so they have to match up the performances of their opponents. Actually, do better than their uh, opponents on the same system. And indeed, we will see some some, let's say, same same methods of again because indeed they they just picked up by their their tutor that how to approach this benchmark and indeed. Oh, and that's oh. just the beginning. It's less than thirty oh. seconds in, and we have the first blue screen from Rudolf. Aren't they in first now, Truthman? Mm -hmm. Isn't Rudolf on yeah, the yeah, left yeah. and yeah, Matchai sure. on the yeah. right? Indeed, so the, the red screen is Machai, the blue yeah. screen is Rudolf, so it's seamlessly working for you guys. Doesn't have to change anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you a fan of uh, XTU, uh, Mr. UK guy? You don't like it? It's too rough? Or too easy? Or you can't compete with the amateurs? <laughs> <laughs> That will be the day that I will quit overclocking, I think. For some of the local guys, because PJ did like a, a head-on, I think, wasn't it? Last year at, at some some event from, from, from MSI, where they also did like a 1v1 battle, and, and PJ lost from one of the local guys. He, he lost against uh, Nico P. Ah, okay. Yeah. And that is, he called him his uh, nemesis from now on. <laughs> Probably having nightmares, <laughs> but it is like it is. That's typical in overclocking. It, it, it's. I think it, we we can just say that like the thing that happened in France, like nobody was betting if we could place bets on on who would win this. Nobody was placing any bets on maybe bull shooter or or, or they were all placing bets for, let's say Dan Cop and Extreme Addict. And Extreme Addict was like out of the game pretty soon. Quarter final, same for Wizardy and, and all the other guys. And it was like the new kids on the block. Orion 24, okay, Zizolia is not a new kid. Dan Cop was still there and Bullshooter was there as well. So really unexpected turnout in France. This is so always waiting. exciting to watch this kind of competition. I, I, we, we love watching it. We love casting it as well. It's it's, no, it's always uh, always fun to have this uh, this feedback from the, from the guys. And yeah, as we say, everything can happen, right? Yeah, indeed. Anything can happen. So we are right now on Rudolf screen while Machai is actually restarting the system. And we have the first uh, score that is 1397 and is running at 4.6 gigahertz from now on. Uh, the CPU temperature is uh, quite okay, like going between 65 and 83 degrees. And uh, they're not dedicated CPU, they are using air cooling. 4.6 gigahertz for the CPU CPU core frequency, but the processor cache frequency is at 4.1. Uh, four core are activated. There's no thermal throttling, so there's still some space to improve. Mm -hmm. Indeed, they have like you have to fight a little bit with, with not that good cooling as they had like in France. In France, they were using like the all-in-one water cooling setups from Corsair back then, and now they're just using. I think this is a cooler master. HyperX thing, how is it called, Trufman? You have the XX uh, specs? HyperX uh, 
212? Yeah, 212. 212. So indeed, it's like a very entry level air cooler. So indeed, still, let's say, capable of, of managing e easily, let's say, 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz for daily overclocks. Because in fact, XTU loads your CPU way higher than than normally any game or, or whatever you want to use in, in, in daily usage. So indeed, you still have some headroom. If you can run XTU, Normally in daily, let's say daily usage, you will have like lower temps of let's easily 10 to 15 degrees sometimes. We have Rudolf benching again. He's actually in the lead. He's the only one person to have submitted a score in this uh, second semifinal, second part of the sem uh, the first semifinal. And uh, we can't wait for Machai to submit the score that will soon happen. Let's focus mm -hmm. in here. They are both running at 4.6 gigahertz. Yeah, we have a question. What happens if now Macho wins in this 15 minutes? So indeed, guys, you see Rudolf CSGO already has like two scores submitted and we just add them up. So you have a total of 2,834 points. So Macho needs to get at least a 1,400-ish score in to be able to go past Rudolf CSGO. Normally, that will not be a problem. The thing for Rudolf CSGO is he needs to be able to match at least the previous score from Matchheim because he's working on that system right now. So he has to do at least 1,442 as well, and maybe even better. Oh, nice first score. That's the first score he's submitting for Matchheim, and it's actually at 1,437. So this is actually even better than Rudolf right now. And Rudolf yep. is at his third score submitted. It's trying to push the core voltage, 1.5 volts. Running 4.7 gigahertz, eh? Yeah, they're getting keep, there. Keep on pushing it. Keep pushing it. That's what it's all about. Or is running the benchmark. Oh, the benchmark crashed. It crashed. It didn't blue screen, it just froze. Mm -hmm. And that could be sometimes an issue with XTU that you sometimes are obliged either to close down all the processes in the task manager or either just opt for a straight reboot to make sure that it works again smoothly. But we've said it before, it's a very easy to use benchmark just to test like if your setup is sort of stable. We've told the story before of Prime95 and all those benchmark tools to let's say look if your setup is stable for daily usage or yes or no. This is free downloadable and it takes like what one or two minutes max if you have like a powerful setup and you can read out everything that you want we're already seeing like 90 degrees now on the package temperature which is getting high it's about nine yeah as you say it's about to hit 90 degrees but there's no thermal shortening kicking in so there's still some room left and it's uh, at 4.6 gigahertz 4.64 actually We'll see what kind of score he can get. This is actually fun because he has the exact same score he had on the previous platform. So he's maybe mm -hmm. using the exact same technique in the settings. Yeah, it could be. But normally oh, he can 40, push... Oh, Rudolf CSGO should be able to push a little bit higher because Machai was able to match, or let's say do 1,442 before. So he needs to make up 17 points at least, Rudolf CSGO. Which is not an easy task to do because Machai already beated his score, his previous score of 1,431 with six points. So he has some work to do. He has to figure out something. Maybe use a lower divider and just go a little bit higher in the B-clock. So indeed, yeah, they can enter the BIOS, but of course you have to think, we guys are, are let's say, acquainted with, with, with working a lot in the BIOS. Uh, even I don't think even XMP profile has been loaded. So they're just running what the Asus BIOS at this moment is, is giving for the for the G-Skill memory. So probably maybe just 2,133-ish memory speed. So indeed, if one figures out that they can set XMP, load up 3,466 megahertz, this score will go up way, way, way higher. But This would be a tough game for Rudolf because he's uh, lacking a few points from the previous run. And Macha is already higher than him in his previous run. So that means he needs even more points to, uh, to, to catch up on the first place. That's going to be uh, quite tough for him. Yeah, and indeed, like we said, I think 4,000. Oh, Blue friendly. screen! 
So he needs to get his, his tactics right. Indeed, like I said, maybe do 40, 45 multiplier and just try to raise the B clock so they get the memory frequency higher as well. And just to see if he can snatch or, or get over those 1,442 points that Machai did on the setup before. We are back on Machai system. 102 base clock, 1.35 volt for the CPU. Going to push to 4.6. We're approaching the six minutes from the end. Important point is they are both taking notes. So they, they came to us and asked, can we take notes during the competition? Like, sure, sure. Just uh, take, get a pen and a, and a paper and you can take notes. And they, they both took notes at the first round and they took notes as well for, for this one. Uh, the one that will get qualified to access the final of the HWBot World Series for Amateur will of course have some information about the system React, but this is only if he's going back on one of the system. That's going to be in the... This would be interesting to see how they uh, you know they use these nodes mm. for, for, the next, for the next match. Yeah, and that's also a thing that we see with a lot of extreme overclockers. They have this little booklet with them with like with all the nodes for the benchmarks because benchmarking is not a lot it was before let's say all about raw frequencies and, and just pushing a new high score for rudolf csgo no for it's for match i again oh, for match i that yeah. would be hard that would be hard for rudolf to catch up on that because match i just even top up his previous score on the other platform so this would be super hard for rudolf to uh, to at least come close to that but nothing is nothing is done yet. There's four minutes and thirty seconds left. Anything can happen between Machai and Rudolf. See if they can. Indeed, the discussion on Twitch is that they were saying like they could should get like sixteen hundred ish points at those frequencies. Indeed, if you have like B die or maybe four sticks of E die and, and everything is well dialed in at four thousand five hundred megahertz, you should be above sixteen hundred points. But Keep in mind, guys, these guys, let's say, almost didn't know anything about overclocking. Blue screen! My child's still yeah. pushing it. He has, like, the right attitude to, to boost. He still wants to go higher just to assure his spot for the final and for the amateur competition. But indeed, getting back to these guys, they only had, like, what, Truthman, 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes max of tutoring, and then they had some, some, some time to play on the setup and do the qualifier straight. There are 30 minutes of the, of tutoring, and there are 30 minutes at testing the system by themselves. Mm -hmm. So indeed, if you have to explain in 30 minutes already, well, look, this is how your total CPU speed works. These are the things that you can change. These are the settings that you must follow. If you start with memory timings, I think most people will just go up and walk away. They, they're It's too confusing and, and too complex to explain everything. So it's just... Stick to the basics, up the multiplier, up the B-clock, up the volts, watch temperatures, and just run. And we what see thermal it? trotting in full motion now. Yeah, it's a, it's a, he is eating the limit. He is at the limit now, but he's at 4.7 gigahertz, so maybe he's trying to, you know, see what he can do. But sadly, with the thermal throttling, so it, it's too high in, in temperature produced, so the CPU reduce its own frequency by itself. So it's like the, the safety measure that kicks in. And that's something very important that we are explaining to, to all the people here taking the workshop and coming here on the HWBot World Tour activity is that you can, you know, it's not that, it's not risky anymore to overclock your CPU as long as you don't remove all the safety features. Thermal throttling is a features, current limit throttling is a features, power limit throttling is a features. So all these are, even if you push very hard in the system, it, it it won't die. It won't die. We we had more than 480 people taking the workshop and trying by themselves to push to push some of the settings and see there's like all the all the setup is still alive. The Asus motherboard here have been uh, have been quite robust. The Intel Core i7-6600K is um, a nice piece of hardware that you know you no know, it, it can it can throttle itself to to make sure that it doesn't explode. Yeah, indeed, and, and Rudolf doesn't mind. He just even up to 4,800 normally, but indeed you see his CPU throttling down to around 
4.2 gigahertz, so he will not be able to match or beat his score. Maybe he didn't get the thermal throttling part during the, the tutoring, and he just wants to clock higher, and he probably is trying to figure out why can I not improve my score. We have them side by side. There's one minute left in this first semi-final of the HWBOT World Series for Amateur. It's like, I, I, I can see him, he's like, no, I, I don't get it. I, I clock higher, but my score is not getting higher. I don't think he's seeing the, the throttling. Maybe he says like, oh, maybe that would be fine. Mm. Oh, and he crashed. And it crashed. Uh, he might not have the time to reboot the system in the, in the 30 seconds that he have before the end of the run. So what is important is they have to start the benchmark before the end of the timer. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's they they can't submit the score. I think Maciej is going for the best score of, of the let's say maybe the weekend. He's doing four thousand seven hundred forty megahertz now, and and the highest CPU frequency I saw in the qualifiers were four thousand seven hundred and thirty. So he's ten megahertz higher, and maybe yeah. he can match the previous high score, which was set by Bergilicious. I hope I pronounced that well, which was fourteen hundred and sixty-eight oh! points. Oh! Blue screen right at the end of the timer. Right at the end of the timer. He got the blue screen. And we have Rudolf CSGO that is losing against Machai. Machai is accessing the final, accessing the final of the HWBOT World Series for Amateur. Very well done, guys. That's um, as Amateur that didn't knew anything two days ago. Uh, this is a well done score. Now um, that was that was a tight battle, isn't it, my uh, my dearly goat? Yeah, indeed. It's always fun to watch indeed how these guys push. And then the interesting part in this competition is indeed that even if you just look at the previous scores of Rudolf CS:GO, he was still always fourteen hundred thirty-ish, and Machai beat his previous score on the same platform with over thirteen points, doing it as well on his platform. While Rudolf wasn't able to match Machai's score back then. So indeed, he had found that little bit of extra just to, to, to boost the, the XTU performance, going probably maybe a lower multiplier, higher B-clock, and just, yeah, got his ticket for the final. Able to win, like, uh, a nice bunch of hardware. They, have to, they can win an Asus Z170A motherboard, uh, Seasonic PSU P760 watt, uh, Platinum Series PSU from Seasonic. They can win the, G, the DDR4 2 times 4 gigabyte kit. This, this is actually the exact same one they're using uh, from Jiskill. And they can uh, go back with, uh, you know, some hardware and a nice nice weekend of fun here at the LAN ETS in Montreal. So if you're at the LAN ETS, you can come down in the next uh, 25 minutes. We'll have the, the, the next match that uh, we'll see the second semi-final of the amateur. If you are at the LAN ETS, just come down, just say hi. Uh, and uh, if you are online, just say hi on the live chat. We are monitoring the, li the live chats. And there's a question from Alan Alber Alberino. Uh, when are the finals? So the final, this is the uh, the final for the HWBOT World Series North America. Uh, we have two semi-finals for the amateur, then we're going to have the final. We had the semi-final for the Extreme this morning, and we'll have the uh, f the official final for the golden ticket to go into the HWBOT World Championship in December. Uh, to be happening uh, earlier, early this uh, this afternoon. So for th the next match will be the second semi-final for the amateurs. Same thing, XTU two times 15 minutes, and they switch the uh, the system by uh, by uh, like like they like, like they should. Yeah, that's uh, that's. It. If you have any questions on the live chat, let us know. Uh, we will take a short break, and if you have, um, if you want to, if you follow us and get the information every time we go live, you can always subscribe on our Twitch.tv channel, twitchtv TV. And in the meantime, um, we'd like to thank you for watching that. <laughs>